Welcome back to my channel guys, it's Danny here from the Gold Coast in Australia and today's video I'll be upcycling this coffee table I got for free on the Facebook marketplace but it's a special upcycle today because I'm giving it to Brandon and Amy, my son and his girlfriend and I've just bought a house up north that on five acres so I'm doing this up for them, it's sort of like, but like a housewarming present so it's extra special um, it does have a bit of damage it's missing one handle it's broken and I think some of the dogs actually chewed on this so I've got my work cut out for me but I hope you stay with me while I do it and enjoy I actually love watching this painting back in time lapse. <laughs> I really enjoy it. But anyway, the first coat is always the worst coat and as usual I haven't put any primer or stain blocker under it. And with this one I really regretted that because this table actually took five coats of paint and actually six on the top. Um, I ended up rolling a couple of extra coats onto the top so um, yeah I did waste a lot of paint I think without not using a stain blocker but um, nothing came through, nothing bled through it which is fine it's just that it would have helped to cover up the dark stain underneath but that's okay I've learnt my lesson I'm using just a wall paint, easy coat, Torben's easy coat. It's a low sheen wall paint and the color is crisp white. I actually sort of regretted painting inside these drawers but in the end it all worked out okay. This is actually Kmart adhesive vinyl that I used um, in some previous videos for stenciling and decals. I decided to actually put in a panel in the side pieces I thought to jazz it up a little bit and I got this bit of board out of the back of a really big um, photo frame or picture frame of 60 by 90 centimeters and I thought it'd be perfect to use as a base and I cut it to size So it actually fit perfectly. 
I had a few ideas with this. One was to cover it in something, so I had some more paper left over from my art that I did, and I think that looks pretty good, but I decided for this particular coffee table and upcycle that I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do something else that I had seen. I'm going to try a herringbone pattern on the actual insert. So what you need for this is popsicle sticks. I got the extra large popsicle sticks but you can get any size that you want and you cut the curved ends off to make them into just straight uh, panels and then I just placed them on my board. I stuck them down on my board in herringbone pattern. This took a little bit. I had a fail with this and actually next video I'm going to go into more detail about how I did this and I'm going to tell you what I did that failed and what I learned doing it because um, yeah it did take a bit of effort but now I know how to do it but eventually this turned out really well the second attempt and um, yeah, it was a complete success. <laughs> So after the glue had dried, I used my Maxi Nails glue that I always use for my projects on this. I had to cut off the edges and I didn't have a, you know, a, an electric tool to do it so I had to do it by hand. I just used a Stanley knife, I scored it on both sides and it came off really well. Um, took a bit of elbow grease but that was okay, it worked out in the end. I'm using my Timbermate wood filler to fill in the gaps um, and so I bought a white filler. Normally I use like a darker colour and this actually too will give it a nice whitewash look after it's all sanded down but um, just you just have to make sure that it's you know pressed really deeply into the gaps uh, otherwise bits will fall out but as you can see there sort of um, one of the panels I'm holding it down didn't I didn't glue it down properly so I had to go back after I'd sanded it and I glued it back down and it was fine I'm using balsa wood to actually make a frame for the inserts. Um, but this balsa wood's really nice. I mean, it works like cardboard. It's like cardboard, really, but it has a beautiful um, grain to it. And it actually is a timber. It's from a tree, apparently. But it's so easy to work with. And you can just cut it with scissors, or I use a Stanley knife to cut it as well. But it's, it's just up to you. Um, I cut it in 1.5 centimeter strips and then I measured the strips on my insert and then I mitered the corners after I'd cut them to length. So it's sort of like a, a frame really and it covered the um, little bits that I didn't that was sort of missing from the edges so it really neatens it up and uh, looks really nice. I was really really pleased actually with it. It's so easy to work with but I ended up taping it down and placing it where exactly where I wanted to because with the mudded corners if you don't get it in the right place and I've already glued it down um, yeah I'd be in trouble it wouldn't look neat so I thought I'd actually just tape it down to begin with and then I just picked up each piece and glued it and put it back in place and after that I put a matte varnish on it and that will protect it and should keep it waterproof that sort of thing. Not that this table should go out into the weather but um, if anything spilt on it it should protect it.
I decided for inside the drawers to put in some little motivational sort of sayings. I thought that would be <laughs> a bit of a nice touch so that I don't know when they open their drawers if they're having a bad day they could see some inspirational quotes but anyway um, I used a Cricut machine to do that and I just placed it on top of the actual contact that I'd already put in and it just gives it a little bit of a, a personalized um, feeling I think I think it's just a nice touch especially if it's for a present I think you know having special touches like that makes it extra special and a little bit more personalized I made, I had to make a um, like a pattern for the front of the drawer because I wanted to get the, I wanted to place the knobs properly in the center so I made a pattern that I could use for each drawer so it would be positioned exactly so I just did that and I folded the paper into a half and then half again and that gave me the center piece and then I glued the knobs on because the um, screw wasn't actually long enough for me to screw it in so I had no choice really and then I waxed it and the drawers were done this is my go-to wax that I use on, I use on painted things and chalk paint and even I used it on just some plain wood but to apply it you just wet a rag and you're meant to rub it in in a circular motion leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes and then polish it down it gives a nice sort of sheen it really does make a big difference to the actual finished effect of the wood it really finishes it off and makes it look complete Okay, well that didn't stick on. I don't know whether it was it was the PVA. Um, it didn't stick with the PVA glue. It just came off. I don't know whether it's because I waxed this, but I don't think so. Um, I'm just not sure. So I might let this dry a bit, and then I'm going to stick it back on with my Axie nails. I didn't want to do that originally because I didn't want to ruin this. But I spent so much time on these things here that I'm really just at my wits end. So. I'm going to stick it on with the hard as nails and that hopefully, fingers crossed, should be fine. had enough material left over for two and I just used um, some leftover balsa wood and yeah I made some little coasters I thought that would be cute one for Brandon and one for Amy and I just did it the same process as I did the side panels <laughs> <laughs> 